How's everybody today? Praise God, aren't we? I'm telling you, it's another beautiful day in God's neighborhood, and it's a great day to go home. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. The book of John, the gospel, chapter 1. John 1. Oh, yes. <laughs> Are you refreshed? I didn't say refleshed. I said refreshed. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Verse 6. The uh, Gospel of John 1, verse 6. Let's speak it together. How many of y'all know we're in trying times? Hallelujah. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe or follow. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. When you become born again in the Spirit, you become a witness of the light. Amen? Now you are the forerunner of the true light. If you are filled with the Spirit of God, and the light expresses through you. But remember, the enemy is always going to try to contaminate somehow to darken that light or diminish the light. In verse 10, it says, He was in the world, and the world, the true light was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own creation. <laughs> he came to his own creation creation, his own people, and his own did not receive him. Why? Because they were taken by darkness. But as many as received him, who believed him, to them he gave the right to become his offspring, children of God. To those who what? Believe in his name or follow in his name. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And a word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, his plan, and truth. Now the world cannot comprehend this at all. Because you must be born of the Spirit to comprehend this. Other than that, they're not going to get it. Just like Nicodemus. He didn't get it. Amen. I remember when the Lord came to him. They went searching and they met. Nicodemus says, what do you mean you got to be born again? I got to go back in my mother's womb at an old man? Jesus was very gentle. Didn't call him stupid or anything. I mean, but he did rebuke in certain ways. He's like, you guys are Jews and read the word of God and don't know this? You didn't hear about me coming? Everything was prophesied by all the prophets and you still don't get it because darkness has veiled you. That's happening today. And one of the things that's happening, I'm telling you right now, we are seeing a tremendous falling away. Falling away. People walking away from their call, purpose, and destiny all over the world. It's a tremendous fall. And the word tells us that there must be a falling away first before the Lord comes. So we know it's got to fulfill prophecy no matter what. People are getting saved and then falling away. People that have been Christians for 25 and 30 years are falling away. Because they're not connected. They don't learn how to fight. 
They're not following. They're not hearing. They're not worshiping. They're still involved in the self-centeredness and selfish ambitions. They're not willing to lay these things down and deny themselves. They're out for success and fulfillment in all places, but in the presence of God. And remember, the first thing the enemy begins to do is steal your identity. And first thing he wants to do is compromise. Compromise. We sang that song, to know you is to never compromise. And the compromise is tremendous everywhere. And people are going astray. They're selling out the fullness of their birthright for selfish ambitions. They're selling it right out. Oh, they may not be doing the things of sin that mankind is accustomed to or believers are accustomed to. But how many know that disobedience is rebellion? And rebellion is a form of what? Witchcraft. They're not even recognizing that they're out moving out of God's will, out of God's time. They don't even get it. Because of one compromise that's come and begin to veil. That's all it takes. Believe me, the devil doesn't come to you and say, listen, I'm going to try you and tempt you today. And I'm going to veil you as soon as you cooperate with me. Because that's what he does. Children of God, we are divine offspring of God. Everyone say it with me. I am a divine offspring of God. One of the things he's trying to do is restore identity, which has been compromised, lost. See, people are not maintaining their identity. When you don't maintain your identity, you maintain your old ID. They're carrying two IDs around. I used to do that when I was a kid. I had multiple IDs. When I was in the drug world, I had multiple birth certificates. I could change it any time and go anywhere I wanted. And be who whatever. But now I maintain an identity of who I am. I am because he is. And because I'm an offspring of the great I am. That means I live an eternal life. My purpose is everything in my life is now eternal, not temporary. It's eternal. There must be focus on eternal, not temporary. We do things to maintain in the temporary. Amen? We have to manage temporary. But there's a life in the eternal where there's an identity in the eternal of who you truly, you truly know who you are, not who you were. You don't live from the past. You live from the future. You don't look in a mirror and say, hey, I'm, no, you're his. Do not let the mirror dictate who you are. Do not let your emotions dictate who you are. Do not let your successes dictate who you are. Do not let your failures dictate your, who you are. Do not let your sicknesses and diseases dictate who you are. Because they'll keep you there. Amen? Oh, happy days. Go to Acts 17. Divine offspring. Remember when David fought Goliath? Goliath came with a sword and kind of laughed at David. David said, I don't come to you with anything but in the name of the Lord. Because he knew his identity. He knew his what? His identity. See, the Spirit of God, the eternal keeper, keeps your identity. He's always there trying to keep you and tell you who you really are. And convict us when we stray. Verse 24. Acts 17, verse 24, let's speak it together. God who what? Made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of all heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to life 
all life, breath, and all things. And he made from one blood every nation of every man who dwells on the face of the earth. That doesn't mean that, listen, one blood. We all carry the same type, different types of blood, but red blood. Amen? I'm going to get that. We all carry a red blood, don't we? Amen? It doesn't matter what your skin is or what your nationality is or what your language is. We all came from one blood. Every one of us. But this is where the enemy infiltrates to try to mix blood produce offsprings that are hybrids and all kinds of things. And that's where the enemy won in the, in the garden and defeated Adam and Eve and produced hybrids, offsprings. We became mixed blood then. Thank God for Jesus who came to bring the right blood because our DNA was totally changed. And when you become a believer in Christ Jesus filled with the Spirit of God, your DNA changes. You are now have an eternal DNA, not a temporary one. And if you carry eternal DNA, you carry an eternal identity. But this is where the enemy wants to compromise and enter. Is everybody with me? Hallelujah. And verse 26 again, And he has made from one blood every nation of men who dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grope for him and find him. We talked about this. Though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said, we are all, what? We are also his what? Offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is something like gold or silver or stone. Something shaped by art and man's devisings. Truly these times of stupidity and ignorance, God has overlooked. But now has commanded all men everywhere to what? To repent, to turn from these things. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. <laughs> by what? Raising him from the dead dead. See, we are the divine offspring that follow his name and maintain our own identity in him, not in ourselves. We've given up our identity. See, when you became born again in the spirit, you gave up your life. When you gave up your life, you gave up your old identity. And I don't think people still get this yet. They're still fighting for their old life and their old identity. In fact, the Word tells us that when God delivers you from something and you go back and build on it again, it's an abomination. It's rebellious and it brings a curse. Hello? 1 John chapter 3. Divine offspring. I think we need to write that on our mirrors. What a smiley face, you know. Divine offspring. I mean, we battle it all the time, don't we? we I mean, we're hard-pressed, I mean, no matter what. We battle it all the time. Again, it's the first thing the enemy wants to compromise is your identity. He doesn't have to get you to sin. You'll sin right afterwards. <laughs> 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak. Behold what manner of love that the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him, nor does it know him now. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. In other words, what we will really be like. Now, the Word tells us that we're going to be like angels who have glorified bodies. Amen? Heck, you can go scuba diving with no gear. You can play tennis on both sides. You don't even need a partner. We'll have glorified bodies. 
at some time everything's going to be wiped away and everything's going to be rolled out brand new. Brand new. We will not be like what we are now. There's no lust. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. All of this foolishness and life living in this place will be wiped away. There won't be any sorrows. In fact, you probably won't even remember where, what was here. Most of our memory will be gone. I will have a new memory. Born in a new state of being. Eternal. Forever and ever and ever. With the King of kings and Lord of lords. The great I am. That's why he says, man, listen. Hold on. See, when you begin to compromise your, when the enemy begins to compromise your identity, you lose sight that this place is temporary. Everything is temporary. I'm telling you, I, I express it over and over. After my visitation with the Lord, it took me a long time, months. Because everything I looked at was temporary. In fact, I kept thinking, what the heck? What does it matter? If everything is temporary, let's just go rescue as many souls as possible. Because everything is temporary. These bodies are temporary. Everything is temporary. The only thing that is eternal is the breath of God. And those who dwell in the breath of God. Now your identity is maintained and refreshed from God's presence. Does everybody get it? From where? God's presence. Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Now, verse 4. Let's read it. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he whom he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Then why do people sin? Because they're not abiding in him. Amen? That's the answer. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. This is called willful sin. Does everybody get it? It's called what? Willful sin. If there's willful rebellion, is that sin? Yes, it's the same thing. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin. He will not rebel. He, why? Because he's been born of God. See, just because something doesn't happen right away doesn't mean it's not going to. In other words, when you do something that's out of order, rebellious or whatever, you know, in the Old Testament, things happen a little bit faster than they do now. <laughs> things take, I don't know why, not all the time, something. Heck, you can go out and get an accent for being stupid, you know. I mean, I've, I've, believe me, but it does catch up with you because what you sow is what you what? Reap. Amen. Nobody gets away with it. You will reap what you sow. But so many times because there's a delay there, people think, oh, I can get away with it. Or they forget what they just did. But God doesn't. It's all recorded. How many times have you heard somebody get before the Lord and all of a sudden all, all these things were brought up near there? Man, I didn't even, I couldn't remember. He's got a book of remembrance. Verse 10. He says, in this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was the wicked one, and murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were what? Righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life. In other words, from temporary to eternal. 
because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother, brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And I'm sharing with you eternal life abiding in him. In him. The love of the Father, his plan, his choice for me and you, called us to be children and restored us, is desiring to restore us to our original state of being with a new identity in him. As a divine offspring, we must maintain position under the law of the spirit of life, which is the law of the spirit of life is what? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and, and follow. Amen? And practice the righteous ways of Christ by feeding from the tree of life. Many people are still eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They're still proclaiming about good. They're still justifying themselves because of the things they don't do, but not realizing that the things that they are doing are lawlessness. Amen? It takes cooperation with his plan to fulfill our call, purpose, and destiny. We must hold on to our true identity as divine offspring. Having no fellowship with darkness, the Bible warns us many times over and over, be careful who you associate with. Amen? Bad company corrupts what? Good habits. In 2 Corinthians 6, Is everybody okay? Verse 17. What's it say? It says what? Therefore, that means if you will do this, if you will what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what is what? Unclean. And I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So what disqualifies us from being sons and daughters? Touching things that are what? Unclean. He tells us right here. He says, therefore, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit and perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Don't touch what's unclean. Maintain qualification as an offspring. Again, rebellion is unclean. I don't know why the Lord keeps bringing this up to me. Rebellion. He says people don't realize that rebellion brings a curse. He says I give my counsel. I tell people what to do. They ask me every day what to do many times. And they don't, they don't listen. They don't hear. They don't follow. They still follow the dictates of their desires and their own hearts. And they bring a curse on themselves. And every one of those curses begins to harden the heart more and more and more. And they become more and more rebellious and miss all kinds of specific opportunities that I have in the plan. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. See, when we get home, I really believe God's going to show us all kinds of stuff. And he's going to share with us, see, when, you remember when I told you about this? Yeah. Well, I want you to know if you would obey that, all of this was there. But because you rebelled against this, that was wiped away. Now everything's got to go another way. I really believe he's going to show us every time he had to change things around for our life. And I use, well, people say, well, God knows it all. Yes, he does. But I believe also sometimes he doesn't let himself know. Does everybody understand that? You know how a loving parent is sometimes? They interfere with the kids' lives because they want so, so good for them, you know. They want to cause them to do this or whatever. I mean, I'm not going to give my keys to a young child that can't drive. Amen. Or they keep getting in accidents. God does the same thing with us. 
But I really believe he gives us an opportunity. Yes, he knows the end result. But he still allows us to follow through. We have the free will to choose. And he's got to shift all kinds of time. Every time that we rebel. Everything's getting ready. I mean, there's a beautiful opportunity for something. Next thing we know, boom, we made it. The influence of the enemy, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, selfishness, whatever it is. Changed course. Anybody ever miss an exit on the highway? Same thing. Even, uh, what is it, Google Map or whatever? By the time I get to the exit, it says, turn right. I passed it, man. Anyways, they just can't keep up with you. Verse 12. Philippians 2, verse 12. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, if there was fear and trembling there all the time, <laughs> uh, we wouldn't be doing some of the things that we do. For it is God who's working, works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining and grumbling. Why? Will that cause a compromise or drift? Yeah. That you may become blameless and harmless, children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. He wants us to be blameless and harmless children, offspring of the Most High, without fault in a crooked and perverse generation, as lights to the world, leading many to Christ by your life examples of Christ's integrity. Amen? How many of you know what's, what reveals your integrity? Your choices. Your choices will reveal your integrity. Your approvals and your disapprovals will reveal, and reveal your integrity. Ephesians chapter 5. Divine offspring. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Whoa. So we're to imitate God and his character, his integrity with purity and holiness. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting to saints. Don't even let it be named among you. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what's acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose it. For it is shameful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are what? They're what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of God is. Remember where you came from. Amen? We need to have, we need to have more wisdom and discernment. So we can make right choices. We've got to be able to, have, be able to see things through. Remember where you came from as a divine, you know, when we were offsprings of darkness and, and now we are the offspring of light. Never lose sight where you came from. But don't dwell there. Amen. 
thank God where you are now. <laughs> that we should always maintain an attitude of gratitude. Now remember, we are an eternal offspring. And we want to maintain and refresh our identity in Christ all the time. And this is where the lack comes from. Because your identity comes from where? The presence of God. Amen? You can identify with things. In other words, you can read a Sports Illustrated. I don't know if they still make those anymore. But anyways. Or you can read about somebody, you know, and have all their statistics. So you can identify with them. But you don't carry it, their identity. I can read all about Jesus and identify with him. But my identity comes from his presence. So when I read his word, I'm identifying with who he is. And from his presence lets me know who I am. And this is the lack of God's presence in people's lives. They now searchers for everything else but God's presence. They've exchanged everything else for God's presence. Is everybody okay? Romans 8, 28. This is called the falling away. Eight twenty eight. Let's speak it together. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, from whom he foreknew he also predestined to become, what? Conformed to the image of his son. That's us. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren, moreover whom he predestined, these also what? Called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say these things? If God is for us, what? Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him for, up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? And who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also raised. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also makes intercession for us. Aren't you glad? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present or things to come nor height nor death nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, God's love for me and you is constant. It doesn't change. It's our love for him that changes. And that's where the enemy plays. We are predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus through trials, through testing, through molding. Amen? So everything we go through is just trying to expose and remove the things that are preventing us from being transformed into his image and likeness. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1. Shish kebaba. 1 Peter 1. Verse 3. Did I say First Peter 1? Glory. Blessed be what? The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for us. Who are kept by the power of God. Who's the power of God? Holy Spirit, the eternal keeper. 
through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Again, so that the genuineness of your faith, to see how genuine you are, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Various trials for genuineness of faith and character and ability. We go through, we are tested. When there's opportunity, there's a test. Every time we get taught something, there's a test. God wants to know whether you're keeping it, whether you're practicing it. Every time there's a counsel, there's a test. Every time. We are tested daily. We are, we are tried by the powers of darkness and challenged. Amen. But God will allow tests. He'll let them use. He'll, lose, he'll use the devils, demons to even try us to see where we are. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 16. In fact, he knows where we are all the time. The problem is, is we don't. <laughs> That's why the, the greatest weapon is what? Deception. Romans 8, 16, let's speak it together. Everybody there? The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Okay, now let me ask you this. If you're lacking God's presence, are you going to be able to receive that quickening? No. That's what happens. And if children, then heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, and if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Man, that's maintaining your identity. Remember, where does your identity come from? The presence of God. For I consider that the sufferings of the, this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. For an earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God or his offspring. For we know that the whole world of creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if hope, if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance or endurance. Remember, the Holy Spirit is always bearing witness of our identity in Christ as children and divine offspring. But again, if we're not connected, if we're not staying filled with the Spirit of God, we miss it. We, it get, becomes nullified. We've compromised that. And then we're not able to cooperate, obey, or hear. It just slowly diminishes bit by bit by bit. We don't even know we got into that place until everybody else notices it. 1 John chapter 4. Hallelujah. Verse 1. First on John chapter 4, verse 1. Divine offspring. Everyone say, I'm a divine offspring. I'm an eternal being. Yeah. Don't look in the mirror. Don't let that tell you, man. It, there ain't no eternal beings in the mirror. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you need to find out 
What's in your mirror? <laughs> verse 1, let's speak it together. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Do not believe every emotion. Do not believe every voice. Do not believe every thought. Hello? But test the spirits. Test all of them, whether they are of God or not. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And they've all become news announcers. <laughs> they couldn't hold a job as prophet anymore because they, you know. Hallelujah. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. That's how I know. I ran into an individual, Christian, belongs to a church and participates and does stuff in a church. And when we started talking, his language told, shared, with, shared with me. His language, his way of talking said he ain't real. He doesn't know what Christianity is. He is not connected to the presence of God. Just the way he was talking, I knew it right away. They don't know. See, because people go to church, things they're a Christian and they're okay. Well, they're good. I go to church, yeah. I proclaim Jesus, yes. But do they carry the fruits of the Spirit? Amen? Do they carry the language of the Spirit? And I'm not talking about praying in tongues. I'm talking about just a normal language and how they speak. You'll know them by their fruits, their choices, and their words, whether they are right with God or not. Amen? It says here again, verse 5, they are, they are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. So if you get around somebody that's supposedly a Christian and speaks as like the, of the world, you know they ain't right with God. Now, they might not know it, but you know it. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Does everybody get it? Yeah. Hallelujah. It's a divine offspring, the light of eternity and life. We abide in Him. The more you abide in Him in His presence, in His words, the more you'll express Him. Amen? But again, the first thing the enemy wants to do is compromise your identity. People are selling out their identity all over the world and are receiving, which is pretty disgusting, but they're, they're participating and, and, and receiving the mark of the beast. Does everybody get that? It's the markings of the beast that they're receiving now. Through medication, through things. They're receiving the marks of the beast and don't even realize it. I, I'm still baffled of how many people I know that are believers that are going out and allowing people to inject them with markings of the beast. It's baffling to me. Baffling. Why? Where's their identity? Where's their trust? Amen? Lack of God's presence. Is everybody okay? Anybody okay? <laughs> Second Peter chapter 1. We need to send this teaching to the media. <laughs> 
2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak of grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now, when it says knowledge of God, it means of the, of the Father. Amen? Or the whole Trinity itself. As His divine power has given to us all things. What's His divine power? The, yes, the eternal keeper, Holy Spirit. Has given to us, that's why we want to be led by the Spirit, all things that pertain to life, new life, not old life, and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature as a divine offspring having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to what? Blindness. And has forgotten, wait a minute, that he was cleansed from his old sins. What's happened? Compromised identity. Does everybody get it? Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never what? Stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wow. Again, our divine nature is maintained as a divine offspring and our identity through the fellowship in the presence of God and kept by the eternal keeper and our mentor, the Holy Spirit, always trying to express the character of Christ in integrity. Always. Remember, the Holy Spirit's always trying to express Jesus. Amen? 1 Peter 4. Verse 1. 1 Peter 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with the what? Same mind, same thoughts. Amen. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. That's a new creation in Christ. That's a person who's maintaining onto their identity. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing stupid stuff, doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in a lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. And for this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be what? Serious and watchful in your prayers. And I don't believe there's enough serious people. They're just not serious enough. Because they compromise. They easily sway. Their identities easily sway. And I close with 1 Peter 5, chapter, verse 8. Be sober, that means alert. Amen? Be vigilant, which means consistent. Because the, your, your adversary, the what? devil walks about, look like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can speak to, who will hear him. Does everybody get it? 
Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have been tried, tested, molded a while, this will bring a help to you to be what? Perfect, established, strengthened, and settled so you will not be moved. And to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. And we welcome the Holy Spirit, counsel, correction, the direction, conviction. Kick us in the butt if you have to. Slap us in the back of the head. Whatever you got to do when we begin to compromise our identity. When the voice of the stranger comes and wants to purchase our identity for something of selfishness, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, or pride of life, or wrong choices. Lord, we repent for any area where we have compromised our identity. And we ask that you cut us loose from those entanglements and remove the curses of rebellion that we may be free to follow you all the way home in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.